Mark, get a little tighter, yeah. There you go. Pretty good, right? Yeah. All right.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only, and we have something very cool for you right now. I'm here with Nick Buckman. He's the OEM sales manager at Seakeeper. Thank you, first off, for spending some time with us. And what we really wanted to go through today, we brought the 450, obviously the star of the show here, and we wanted to talk about the collaboration of Seakeeper. Obviously, if you guys don't know about Seakeeper, you might be hiding under a rock somewhere because these guys have grown tremendously. And a lot of these large builders are offering these gyros standard in their boats, which is phenomenal. Um, how how long has Seakeeper been around, first off, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Seakeeper's been around since 2008. 2008. Yeah. All right. So not that long. They started off as a crazy, innovative idea. You know, one of those things that you come up to a boat show and you see it and you're like, that's never going to that's never going to work. Right. Um, and the complete opposite. They've blown up. Like I said, they're everywhere now. And we have one installed on the 450Z. Which sure do. one do we have exactly here? This one here is our Seakeeper 6. Seakeeper 6. Yep. All right. So we wanted to talk about, like I said, the collaboration on this boat. What exactly you guys did, the process of designing this, where it's stationed, and any detail you can add to that. Sure. We'd love to learn more about that. And then later on, I'd like to get into more detail of the gyro itself because we get... I mentioned to you earlier questions all the time of how the gyro works. Sure. Don't get into that just yet. Let's talk about this. So if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, please. Thank you. Um, so Seakeeper and CV have had a, a longstanding relationship um, from they, they were one of our early adopters of our DC DC line, mm -hmm. um, starting with the Seakeeper 3 um, all the way up till now. We're, we're standard on the Seakeeper 6. Uh, you could pretty much find a Seakeeper option in just about all their models from the 290 with our Seakeeper 1. Uh, Seakeeper 2 in, our, in the 320 and 322Z, and the 340 and 340Z, um, and then with Seakeeper 3 in the 370, 390, 390Z, and Seakeeper 6 now is standard equipment in the 450Z. Question for me, and I'm going to ask you as many, because what we try to do here is really learn about these products. Sure. Although we see these boats day in and day out, we really don't know the details anywhere near what you guys know. So we take this as a learning experience. We want you guys at home to take it as a learning experience as well. And we urge you to ask your questions, put your comments in the comment sections there. As you can see, I'm wired up eight different ways. They're gonna toss that question to me. I'm gonna ask Nick and we'll get those answered to you. So make sure to drop those questions in there. One question I have, where are the cutoffs? Where do you, what's the Seakeeper one? Main Sea four, Seakeeper two? Sure, Seakeeper one is designed for uh, boats 20 to 30 feet in length. Um, Seakeeper one is our newest, our newest uh, product, our newest model. For small boats, yeah. Yeah, for small boats. So we're actually we can... having one of those installed on our, on on our boat. Reef runner, 23 yep. little reef runner. Exactly. It should be fun to see, and Nick's going to be a big part of that. We'll show you uh, more of that later. But So it's it's not weight, it's length. You right. Go by. But it's length and beam. We have an alg algorithm that we use to calculate the perfect sea keeper for what model boat. But generally, um, for the end users looking up which model they might want in their boat, we kind of go in your size ranges. You know, obviously, when we work with a boat builder from the beginning of the build, there's a lot of, lot of detail that we go in to make sure that we're picking the perfect boat for the, for the entire use of the, of, the, of the boat, the way that the customer is going to use it, you know, okay. um, across the board. So, you know, Seakeeper 1, again, is 20 to 30 feet. Seakeeper 2 is uh, 30 to 35 to 36 feet. Mm -hmm. um, Seakeeper 3, 37 to 40, 45. You can keep on going up. And then, obviously, our uh, Seakeeper 6 here, Goes up 45 to 52 feet okay. in length, um, and uh, and so you know, and on up through 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 the large. So boats, this is you know. the 45 is the lowest point for the Sea Keeper Six. So it's a lot of a lot of juice for this boat. It should yes. definitely oh, hold yeah. it this, dead this still. Should be up in the 90s. Oh, nice. For sure. Let's let's for pop sure. this thing open so yeah. we can continue. But just so those at home can have a look. So here give us is. a give us a rundown of what we're looking at here. So here you're looking at our Seakeeper 6, um, and basically what, we're, what we have here is, uh, you know, inside of this box, underneath this sound shield here, you've got a, a gyro, you've got a spinning flywheel, okay? And our, our flywheel spins at up to 97, this one spins at 9,700 RPMs. It weighs okay. 870 pounds. Um, it is, uh, it's basically you're looking at when you see our, our designated numbers, the Seakeeper 6, uh, that, that equates to 6,000 newton meters squared. It's, it's kind of mm. how we determine our horsepower. It's the amount of energy that's going to be released throughout the boat and, and enable it to be stable. That's kind of what I thought it was before you said that, but uh, no. <laughs> yes. carry on. Yeah, carry on. Um, very, so, very crazy stuff, as, as we can see. The technology in this is amazing. So 
really what it is a gyro spinning what in one direction at all yep, times it's a gyro gyroscope inside of a an enclosed encapsulated sphere okay a vacuum okay. sealed environment um so you got your gyro that spins on the inside of flywheel that's spinning like i said at 9700 rpms um it, it's different depending on the model you know is it's a relationship between the size and weight of the flywheel and how fast you can spin it now once you get those flywheels spinning at that speed you've got to keep it cool you've right. got to keep the 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 you've got to keep the system cool the entire time. So what we did is we, our inventors put it inside of a, of a vacuum and created a frictionless environment inside. So we kind of equate it to throwing a rock in space. Once you create that energy to get that rock going, it's just going to keep on going at that same speed. You know, really? you just, so that being wow. said, a lot of our energy that the, ener that the uh, unit uses is at the beginning, is at the spool up. Because inside, getting that, started. It, yeah, just to get it started. And you know, that max draw is about 2,300 watts on this, exact, on this particular model. Um, but your operating range is anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 watts, depending on sea state. Hmm. Very interesting. So that thing, just, just doing that spinning in circles at 9,700 RPM is what so makes all the magic happen. So what's going on is you've got a, a, the flywheel spinning, and as a, a wave roll comes in, the gyroscope itself, the sphere, is going to precess fore and aft. And that's just ah, okay. naturally how a gyroscope works. If we learned it's about gonna, it in it's science, it's going to balance class. itself out, keep itself balanced. It, yes, exactly. To transfer that energy port and starboard, it precesses in one direction or the other. And so, you know, that in combination with our three main components that make the Sea Keeper a Sea Keeper, um, eliminate up to 95% of your boat roll. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. We've been on, on a few of them now, obviously, and, and just the difference. Most people that work, most people who end up with a boat with these on it, most of the time they end up telling us they'll, they'll never own a boat without it again. So it's, it's funny how many times we've, we've heard that. So obviously it, it's a great reaction from people and I'm sure, you know, the reason why you guys have grown the way that you have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and, you know, speaking about the Sea Keeper, just a little bit, maybe a little bit more detail, you know, we've got three main components that make a Sea Keeper a Sea Keeper that really se separate it from any other gyroscope on the market. And those three things are our active control, our innovative cooling system, and our uh, vacuum encapsulation. So mm -hmm. our, active, our active brake system is what you'll see on your port side there, those two brake arms. Okay. And what that unit is doing, or what that, that component is doing is controlling the precession rate. Okay, it's actively sensing your sea state and controlling the rate of precession to enable your boat to uh, be stable in all sea states, all sea conditions. So you're not adjusting it if it's two to four or turning it down if oh, it's okay. one to two or whatever. So our active active brake system controls that throughout the entire wave period. So you don't have to touch it. You turn it on at the dock turn and off on, when you get back in all, all speeds, all sea conditions. Can you run this just on batteries? It, this, you do have our DC models on our smaller units from Seakeeper 3 and below. But okay. this here, Seakeeper 6, is an AC model. You, I'm sure you get, can hear the generator going here. Yeah. So, um, you know, more often than not, you're going to be running your generator this entire time. And, you know, your, your Seakeeper will work, you okay. know, indefinitely. Um, getting so, another question actually in. Sure. For those, for those that maybe trailer a boat with, uh, with one of these in it, how long does it take to power it down? Does it have to stay in the water for that? So, period of time. So the unit actually, ha it's gimbaled on the side. So like we said, it's, uh, it's able to precess. Mm -hmm. So once you stop the unit from precessing, rocking fore and aft, it's not, just, it's not it's transferring any. any energy anymore. Oh, so okay. literally you hit the, the power button and that gimbal locks. It, it locks oh, the, the precession. Okay. So it won't so be So it's not going to move anywhere. Right, no. So it, it can take up to four hours for that. that just to stop spinning. To, to stop spinning, wow. you know. That's unreal. Yeah, so getting it on a trailer... And getting it on a lift, I mean, you're yeah. going to be, you're going to have all your engines off and everything off anyway. So the unit's going to be locked, and you're not going to have have any issue there. And this unit, are you running it all day? Like if you're just running at any speed, you turn it on and you just yep. do your thing. You turn it on. This unit here is a uh, spools up in about 28 minutes, okay. exactly 28 minutes to um, to stabilization. So you know you're turning it on when you leave, and more often than not, by the time you get your, your luggage on board, your kids on board, and you're at the inlet where you need it, Ready you're going to go. be well over a half hour anyway. So. so it does nothing at high speeds. You can be doing 70 miles an hour, which this boat yeah. does with that running. Right. It, it actually works less at, at, at higher rate of speed because, you know, it's like, like kind of... It's uh, not moving. You're kind of just... Yeah. Well, you know, we equate it to like being on a bike going real slow and it's very unstable. But when you're bombing a hill, you don't need fast, that stability yeah. as much because you're going fast in a straight line. So... Yeah, you actually it is you it is running and it is working the whole time you're running, but um, 
but yeah, you need you're you're not really it's it's not really working as hard when you're running fast. Right. Uh, super interesting. Yeah, and so you know, getting back to the um, the innovative cooling system, we've got a it's a seawater glycol exchange. Obviously, we talked earlier about mm-hmm. their about heat dissipation. We have to get the heat inside the unit out, right? And they're they're being inside of a vacuum again is limits that heat, but there's still some heat generated when you're spinning something at 9,700 RPM. So um, we have a seawater glycol exchange that basically pulls heat away from the unit and uses that exchange and a heat exchanger to mm-hmm. to dissipate the heat from the unit. Wow. Well, it's great to see. It's great to see where you guys have come. And, and you personally have been with the company? Uh, just over two years Just now. over two years? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Well, is there something we should look at? I guess how to run this thing up at the helm, or what yeah, else would you yeah, like to we touch can, on there? Yeah, we can look at look at us. Uh, Is there anything else, the else we can touch on here? We go ahead and. No, yeah, we can we can probably close it up. And actually, I got another question about running, and I assume it's it's the same if you're running it full full force, but on turns, it doesn't affect anything if you're running. The uh, the computer inside of the Sea Keeper knows the difference between input motion and wave roll. Really, so it allows you to still put the rail on the, on the water line when you're turning into a, you know, making your turns. And it doesn't affect you at all. It doesn't affect your turns whatsoever. That's unreal. Wow. Very cool. Do you have, we have any more questions before we move up to the uh, helm area? Well, I guess that's, that'd be going up to the helm, but can you hide, uh, I guess, your... What would you call it? Your view system, your, yeah, your our display. head unit, your display. Yep. Yep. Hide it if you're using it, I yes. guess, through the garments or through your, your main units. Yeah, yep, exactly. We, um, we can go. We're integrated with uh, Garmin, uh, Simrad, and Raymarine currently. Um, so most of your MFDs that you're going to select, we integrate with. So you have our Seakeeper app right there on the display. Mm-hmm. And then um, beyond that, you have a five inch touchscreen display that, you know, looks great and seamless. You can put up at your helm right. as well if you'd. You like that extra look? What there. do they have on this one? Let's let's go take a look yeah, sure. at this. You can go ahead and take the lead there. Thanks. So here we've got, obviously, you've got all your screens here, and although you can program it into these, um, what CV's done is they've on this boat they put it in in this uh, Garmin unit here. So you've got your power button here, your on off, and then uh, your stabilizing button. This this button and allows the unit to precess fore and aft. So like we said before. If I push that button and it's gray, it locks the gimbal and doesn't allow it to okay. precess fore and aft. When I unlock it, it allows the unit to precess fore and aft and and uh, you know transfer that okay. energy. Do we have it on the at the moment? Or? Yep, the unit's the unit spun up. It's it's spinning and uh, you know you've off. got your roll angle indicator here. So if you were here and this this was gray, you'd be seeing and we're out you know out running. You'd be seeing a lot more of of a roll. You'd be seeing five, right. seven, twelve. You know, something like that. I was looking at it during our sea trial a little bit. Yeah. So, and now when you hit that unit or hit that button, you'll be at zero. Okay. Go through a couple of the other functions that you have here, if you don't. If you sure. Don't mind. So it's just a, it's it's pretty a pretty simple unit. You know, you've got you got information here that'll tell you the model serial number. Um, if you do have service issue, you know, make sure you you copy our, our model numbers and serial numbers and everything to give to your service tech. Mm-hmm. Um, gives you your run hours, your C hours. So run hours is just the amount of time it's been spinning. And your C hours are actually stabilizing hours where the unit's been allowed to precess and use the, you know, uh, use the unit as it's supposed to. Real quick, what, what kind of maintenance is required to, so, for a seat keeper? Being that the unit is inside that vacuum, inside that sphere and that in that encapsulation, the main components, the electric motor, the bearings, and the flywheel itself are pretty well protected. But just like any other system on your boat, you're going to have to service it annually. So we recommend an annual service. Um, it, would, it would involve a, a gli- you know, a flushing out the glycol. And then there's uh, hydraulic fluid in the brake arms that you would also, okay. that you would also change. Um, then in the larger, the AC units, so the Seakeeper 5, 6, and above, um, you have zincs, small zincs, and you know that that's routine with with so minor motor, minor things. Minor things. Yep. Every one hundred and fifty hours or three months, you're changing zincs out, depending on where you keep the boat. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Something that came up. Let's continue on there. What else um, might be interesting to look at with the display? So if you have any alarms, any codes, um, you can find it here. There's um, two different 
different power modes if you want. A, a, it's it's a it's called quiet mode, but you know you can't really hear anything to begin with. It just spins at a slower rate. Um, if you were say you know on the hook and you had your you wanted to more more for uh, DC units if you wanted to turn it down and so not you use had so much an power, issue, yeah. yeah, not use as much power and you know it's a little bit quieter if if the humming bothers you at night. I gotcha. So you've got that, and then uh, and then our home screen, and you can change you can change this to to show a, a graph, you know, and when we're when we're stabilizing, this should just be a flat mm. line, but when you're not stable, it'll and we get any kind of roll whatsoever, which is hard in, in yeah, the basin. Right. Um, we were you thinking know, about doing that display in here, but this monstrosity is not moving unless we get everybody here to jump on the corner, and even then, I don't think we're going to get to it. So, but you mm. guys have seen that. I'm sure throughout the internet and on our center consoles only platforms plenty, you get the idea this thing works. So the, yeah, the good thing is it seems like it's real easy for anyone to it's use. It's pretty user-friendly. Be... It's yeah. very user-friendly. And again, like I said, you know, you're turning it on at the dock before you leave, off when you get back. There's yeah. really, you know, and then everything else, it's a pretty cool graphic to keep track of where you would be if you yeah. didn't have it, you know. Very nice. Very nice. We got any more questions? Give us an idea of the warranty on these sure. units. What, um, how does that look? Each Seakeeper comes with a two-year, two-thousand-hour warranty. Um, you can purchase, um, you can purchase higher uh, warranties. We have a uh, silver and gold warranties that you can you can purchase. Um, basically, increasing uh, increasing the year, uh, the time, because um, a lot of times we're we're finding that you know you're not you're not ever getting to that two thousand hours before you're you yeah. know before you. Uh, more, more often than not, you're hitting the years before the hours. I got you. Know you. I mean? Yeah. Is a Furuno integration coming soon? We are working with. We try to work with all all those manufacturers because obviously we don't want to limit our customers with any any sort of choice right. that they can have. Um, but yeah, we're we're actively working way. with yeah with every with every. Another question I mean. that just came in. So and I mean, even every single time a, a Garmin get releases a new X series or another series, we have we have it's it's a it's a process to get get reintegrated, yeah, of course, but of course. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're working on them all. What size is the actual display that you guys? It's a five inch touchscreen display. It's it looks it's just a little, a little bit smaller than this, maybe similar to the similar to oh, your okay. JL Audio head unit here. I oh, gotcha. All right, guys. Any more? Oh, one thing I have to say about Seakeeper, my short experience, and all of us at Center Consoles only. Just meeting you, it's been great. The, the entire group over there has been phenomenal. When I hear about you know situations or any small situations of warranty being necessary, it seems like they're all over it. It's definitely a great group to be a part of, and it seems like they're doing things right. So if we don't have any questions, do we have anything else? All right, Nick, if you don't, you have anything else you'd like to touch on before we go? Um, Think I mean, of that I, checklist you had. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got to check my notes. No, um, no. I, mean, I think we've gone pretty, pretty well. I mean, if you think of anything else, please. Yeah. If there's, um, would you be open to a contact, an email, or something? If we have anyone else with questions that yeah, you'd like to share. Yeah. If anybody has any questions they'd like to to ask, or you know, you want any more information on Seakeeper, visit our website at Seakeeper.com. Um, you can. My name is Nick Buckman. So if you have any any questions for me specifically. <laughs> Um, you can ask and, uh, beyond that, you know, you just please, you know, we've got countless sea trials and data on our website. If you have a boat existing or, you know, you're looking to buy a new boat, we do refits on your current boat. And we can also do, um, you know, obviously like this boat built from the beginning of the, of, of the build. And, and, you know, that kind of brings up a, a good point is, you know, what was great about the, the build of this and being involved in this project with CV is that we were thought of at the design phase of the build. So right. the location of the sea keeper, the ease of, you know, you see how big that hatch opens up. And I mean, the service guys that are going in there to service this unit, it's a dream. You know, they yeah. go right in and you got full access to everything. Um, it's installed when the liner and cap is off. So it's a very, very simple install. And it's really nice because they they took everything into account, you know, when you're when you're thinking about designing right. a boat and you have Seakeeper in mind, you know, it, it if just... If you have maybe a, an older boat you'd like to add in a Seakeeper to, are there, I'm sure, requirements of how you'd have to solidify the bulkheads or something, wherever that's going to... Sure, yeah. I ...bolt mean, into to hold yeah, those 9,700 RPMs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Those 6,000 Newton meters squared, you got to keep that in check. I was going to sure. say that again. You um, took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, we've, we've done so many refits uh, of used boats at this point. 
that we know exactly how to tie in your structure and make sure that there's not any sort of, um, you know, uh, any sort of incorrect installations. And, you know, now that we're in a majority of new boat builds, we work so closely with Rob Katie and his team and his engineering team that, you know, if, if our refit guys have any questions about CV, we know exactly where to go. Um, and that's kind of goes, is, is true for, for most manufacturers today. Yeah. Well, it's great to see more and more of them coming out. And, and I remember when that Sea Keeper came out, I feel I saw it. Um, and thinking that, I go, that's a crazy idea. Never knew it would get to the point where it's getting. And it's, like I said, becoming a standard feature. And people right. that go out with one of those don't want to get on a boat without it. You know, it's crazy. The family is more comfortable. I'm sure seasickness yep. goes down significantly if you're not rolling out there. Exactly. Um, exactly. And the smaller boats, which what we have, I think it's, it makes all the sense in the world if you're able to do it because those smaller boats are the ones that are rocking. You know, this boat doesn't budge barely. Right. Um, unless you're out there out, in the chop. Out you know, in the trough. But, yeah. Yep. The smaller 23s, 25s, they move. And, you know, one to twos, you're, you're moving. So sure. I'm sure it's a much better experience for the whole family, your friends, if you're fishing, you know, anchor it up on a reef, just about anything. And, and we look forward to, to ours and <laughs> showing yeah, yeah. all you guys that whole process. We want to get the whole installation documented. We're going to bring you in as we try to do everything else, show you how it works on that boat specifically, and then obviously put it out and, and put it in action. You're more than welcome to join us. Oh, yeah. Try to do some fishing or something. Please. Make it fun. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. That sounds good. Well, Nick, thank you very much. If you have anything, you have anything else? I mean, don't let me cut you off. No, I think we touched on just about everything. Um, again, visit our website if you have any any other questions or you know looking into getting the Sea Keeper on your boat. I'll awesome. see how we can help you. Well, thank you again. Up next at, I believe it's two o'clock, we have our 390Z walkthrough. We're gonna walk that with co-owner Ralph Torres. Make sure you tune in for that. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> 